over? We do need to, well, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top equation, which is y equals negative x minus 14. I'm going to replace it with what this y is, right? Because y was right here. But, uh, well, <coughs> it's gone now, right? Because I'm replacing the y with what it is. Negative, 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 negative 8x. So this isn't, this isn't substitution. This is substitution. I just replaced the y, right? Oh. Yeah. So what's the difference if you, if, what was I doing if I put the x over the y? Now that we have this, uh, I just played the switch and stay game, so I'm going to put x's on the right, numbers on the left. Uh, negative 8x switches to positive 8x, negative x stays, it's 1x, and negative 14 switches to positive 14. So I get 14 equals 8x minus 1x is 7x, so that gives me x equals 2, alright? But the thing is, is I still need to go back to the original up here and solve for y. So I'm going to use the second equation there. I've got y equals negative 8 times x, which is 2. So y equals negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. So that gives me the point 2, negative 16. Uh, but I really should check this. So all I'm going to do is go to the first equation here because I used the second one to solve for y. So I'm just going to plug them into both of those. So I've got y, which is uh, negative 16, equals negative x, which is 2, minus 14. Negative 2 minus 14 is negative 16. That's true. It's checked. This is good. Which, uh, which strategy would be best to use on this one? <coughs> I'd use the same thing. Substitution, replacement, whatever you want to call it, right? So I'm going to take this bottom one and replace it into the top one. So you got the x plus 5. It stays the same. But I am going to replace this y with the negative 2x. So I've got negative 2x. Now I can play the switch and stay game. So let's play. x is on the right. Numbers on the left. Negative 2x switches. Positive 2x. X stays positive 1x, and 5 is going to switch to negative 5. That brings my equal That's sign down. Great. Got negative 5. 2x plus 1x is 3x. 3x. Now all I've got to do is see on the poster there it says step 6. Divide by the coefficient. What's the coefficient of x? 3. So it's... Negative 5 divided by 3, done. Now that we have found the y value, uh, x value, let's find the y value. So we'll use that second equation. We've got y equals negative 2 times the x value, which is negative 5 thirds. So as it turns out, y equals, you've got two negatives, so the answer is positive. 2 over 1, so 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 3 is 3. Bam. Yes. All right, but uh, since we uh, do this right, we're going to check this just to make sure. So I'm going to, since I use the bottom equation to find the y value, I'm not going to use that one. I've got to use the top one, okay? So y is 10 thirds. That's going to equal the x value, which is negative 5 thirds, plus 5. Well, you can't add fractions until you have common denominators, so let's change that 5 so that it has a denominator of 3. So that would give us 15 thirds. So got a common denominator of 3. We've got this negative 5 plus 15 is 10. That's the same as the answer that we got checked. Yeah, please don't remember, uh, please remember, rather, to write your answer as a coordinate pair. I got that 
All right, number three is great because all we've got to do is figure out a value where y is x. That'll be very easy to check, all right? So in other words, if I take this y, which is x, and replace this y with x, and I get x equals negative x minus 4, switch and stay game. Uh, I'm going to put the x's on the left. Numbers on the right, x stays, negative x switches, and negative 4 stays, so negative 4 equals 2x. So x equals negative 2. Again, this makes it very easy because it says here that y equals x, so y e equals x, which is negative 2. Well, let's check. So we'll go back to this top equation. Negative 2 should equal negative x, which is negative 2 minus 4. Well, the thing is, you've got a minus a negative, or negative negative, so it's positive 2. Positive 2 minus 4 is negative 2, which is what it should have equaled, checked. This one's almost uh, the same as the last one. The only difference is uh, y equals a negative x. So whatever we find for either y or x, going to be the opposite. It's going to be its negative value, all right? So let's take this. We're going to take this y and replace it with this negative 7x. So I've got this negative 7x equals negative x. So that's from the top equation. Wow, all right. So let's uh, hmm, play the switch and stay game. X is on the left, number's on the right, negative 7x stays, negative x switches, uh, so negative 7x plus 1x is negative 6x. Well, some of you are quite, quite worried because there's no numbers. So there's no numbers. Okay. So negative 6 times what equals 0? 0. X equals zero. All right. <clears throat> well, if you take, if we look at this top equation, where y equals negative x, well, it's just a negative zero. Negative zero is the same as zero. So it looks like y is zero. Let's check. We're going to use that second equation right here well, zero times to check. Zero. So if y is zero, then it should equal negative seven times zero, which is good check. Yes, it would be zero, zero, so let's write the answer so properly up in no here. Solution. So, we did find the x value is zero, and the y value is zero, Bam, done. All right, number five, Winston drove a total of 625 miles on Monday. He drove 95, uh, 91 fewer miles in the morning than he did in the afternoon. How many miles did he drive in the afternoon? Okay. Well, we're really just trying to figure out how many miles he drove in the afternoon, which is being compared to the morning. So we've got 652 miles will be equal to the morning plus the afternoon. All right, so now that we have that first equation, which I got from just this statement, 652 miles on Monday. Now I'm gonna use this second statement, which is 91 fewer miles in the morning. Okay. So in the morning, he drove 91 fewer miles than he did in the evening. There's two different equations you can use for this second one. So he's got uh, 91, you've got, if you take the afternoon and subtract 91, then you'd have the morning. On the other hand, you can use the morning plus 91 would give you the afternoon. Doesn't matter which of these two you use, but choose one of them. Alright, so you guys chose this one, so we're going to stick with this one. So I'm going to use that same technique where we just replace these values in order to find the other one. Okay, so notice it tells us that M equals this garbage. 
So I'm going to replace this M with that garbage. So you got 652 equals M, which was A minus 91, and that was plus A. Now this is great. We can play the switch and stay game. So let's play. Uh, numbers on the left, A is on the right, 652 stays, A stays, it's 1A. Uh, negative 91 switches, and this positive A stays. So I've got two A's, and 3, uh, 4, 7. 743 equals uh, 2A. Jeez. All right. <clears throat> well, solve this. We're just going to take 743 divided by 2. 743 is odd. 2 is even and prime. So I'm just going to keep it like this. In the afternoon, he drove 743 halves miles. Well, that's what it wanted. It wanted us to figure out A, which is the afternoon, how many miles he drove. So we can write that out. Uh, if you want to put this one as a decimal, that'd be fine because it needs a label. So you'd have uh, 371.5 uh, miles. On word problems, if you don't label, it's just wrong. So. All right, so to graph this, uh, let's start with our y-intercept on this first one, which is positive 4. And the slope is 3 over 1. Well, the problem with this 3 over 1 is if I go up into the right one, I'm going to be off the graph. I'm going to make both of them negative. I'll go down 3 to the left one, down 3 to the left one, and there's our final one. Okay? I'll keep those points there. Second one, my y-intercept is negative 4. I'll go up 3 to the right one, up 3 to the right one, up 3 to the right one. Okay? Well, this is good because... These two lines are the same, they just have different, they have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts, so this one has no solution. Yeah. Alright, number seven, this one, uh, we can graph as well. Uh, the only thing is, is we're going to have to make these, so this scale by twos. So that's two, four, six, eight, and ten. So uh, the y-intercept on this first one is ten. And it goes 6, 6 over 1, but I can't go up anymore, so both negative. I'll go down 6 into the right one, and uh, down 6 into the right one. You go to the left one. Oh, uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so that gives us this line right here. Nice. And then we got this other one where the y-intercept is 0. I'll 6 to the right one, and 6 to the left. Well, this one has the same problem. They're both parallel. No solution. So if these lines had crossed, then we would know that that is the solution. Just be careful on those. I mean, if if you do need to change the scale like we did on 7, because we did the scale of these by 2s, that we wouldn't call one of these points 1-1, uh, one, one, for example. It'd be maybe 2-1 or 4-1 or something like that. All right, number A, this is good because we need the two equations and then the solution for these. But since it's a word problem, we need labels, okay? So let's look. Uh, Alonzo and Miguel scored a total of 86 points. So Alonzo and Miguel both scored 86 points. The thing is, is that Miguel, he scored... 36 more points than Alonzo. All right, now I think in this, and on the test it will probably say the same thing. Oh, no. It's got these graphs over here, right? But most of you really don't care to graph. No, that's not graph then. They're there for your help. Like if you want to graph them, go ahead. That's, that's great. Uh, everyone's so happy for you, okay? But uh, otherwise, we're not, and we hope that you don't, okay? So let's look. We have these equations. Let us solve them now. Well, would, would you guys want to solve this? Uh... Not really. Well, no, I, I, don't, I don't care if you want to. 
<laughs> but, uh, which is fair, Tater. But uh, which way would you like to solve it? Substitution. Substitution. I don't know. I don't know. Fastest way. Fastest, yeah. yeah. As it turns out, substitution is the fastest way. Yes. So if you said substitution and you didn't know why, then uh, you'll probably still get it wrong. It's the easiest. It is the easiest way, as far as I can tell, especially in this situation. You can use elimination or graphing if you choose, but whatever. It could be more confusing. I don't know. Right. So let's look at this. We've got. Uh, Got these two equations, a plus m, so we've got a plus m, which was 36 plus a, so 36 plus a equals 86. All right, if you play the switch and stay game, you'll get 2a equals uh, 50. So it looks like Alonzo is going to score 25 points. Is Alonzo x or y? Alonzo is a. If you use x and y, you have to, you have to tell us which one they represent. Okay? Now that we know Alonzo scored 25 points, it's a lot easier to figure out the value of m. All I'm going to do is take this a over here and replace it with 25. So 36 plus 25 would be uh, 61. So it looks like Miguel, he's going to score 61 points, which is a lot more than 25. If you can score 61 points in a basketball game, you're doing pretty good. I think I do right. replacement, just I skip this step. Okay, that's fine. All right, now notice, uh, we should check this. So notice in this top equation, Alonzo should score 25 plus the 61 that Miguel scored. Does that equal 86? Yes, it do. Checked. Checked. Yes, it do. Do we need to write this one as a coordinate pair? No. No, no we do not. Because it's a word problem. You can if you want, just as long as you identify which is X and which is Y, and you still need labels anyway. Okay. So Morgan is 52 years younger than Mr. Santos. So if you take Santos, he's going to equal Morgan, but she's also 52. Mor Morgan is 52 years younger than Santos. And uh, their combined age is 76, so if I take Santos plus Morgan, I'm going to get 76. So yes, we will use the replacement. We're going to replace S with M minus 52. So I'm going to replace this S with this. So that's going to give us... Mr. Santos equals uh, 60. M minus 52 plus the M equals 76. So that would if you play the switch and stay game here. You get 2M equals uh, uh, 8 and 128. So it looks like Morgan is uh, 64. Thank you very much. Matt. So let us change that. Uh, yeah, so the M and the S should be switched. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> so this would be M and this is S. And we would have replaced the other one. Uh, but it just means that this is an S here. Okay. So it looks like Santos is 64 years. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, very good. And then Morgan is 12. Well, Morgan is going to be 64 minus 52, which is actually 12 years. Is Morgan. I knew it. You can check 64 plus 12 is 76. Checked. All right. uh, so what type of strategy will we use on number 10? What are we going to do? Elimination. 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 Excellent. Right? So let's eliminate. Cross out. So we'll just add these because notice 
On this, the coefficients of y are the same, and they have opposite signs. So they'll eliminate right away. So that gives us a zero right here. We've got this 8x, very good, equals 16. X is 2. Bam. Where'd you get the 2? Now, I did 16 divided by 8. And why? I just divided by the coefficient there. All right, now I can use the original equation up in here. 4x plus 9y equals 7. So I've got 4 times x, which is 2. Plus 9y equals 7. Well, that's going to be an 8. Plus 9y equals 7. So and we got 9y equals negative 1. So y equals negative 1, 9. It does need to be a coordinate pair, so we've got 2 and negative 1, 9. And we can check this as well. So we use this top equation to find the y value. We'll check it with the bottom equation. So there we go. That's going to give us 4 times the x, which is 2. Minus 9 times the y, which is negative 1 ninth. That should equal 9er. So 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 9 times negative 1 ninth is 1. Uh, but it's, it would it would have been a negative 1, so we make it a plus 1. There, okay? That does equal 9. These are the same. Checked. So we have to make. Okay, so the y's aren't the same, so we have to make the sixes. So we're gonna put. How do you write? And then, uh, so you gotta make all those, and then. Whoopsies. Okay. <laughs> so this would be seven. And this would be negative 21. So then it makes uh, y negative 3. And then you do um, negatives. Uh, it's not going to be wrong. It's negative 6x uh, minus 4 times negative 3 um, equals 21. Um, and so it would just be negative 6x minus, um, minus 12, oh, or, yeah. I hate you. Yeah. 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 What? Well, that's so it's positive. Okay, so... Yeah, and I got my, my answers wrong then. So then, um, then that'd be y and then equals 21. And then you do min er, minus 12y, right, on both sides. I guess uh, the, the y was used already, so it's going to Okay, up. yeah. Right there. So oh, it's just, yeah, minus 12. Oh, okay. So then it'd be x equals nine, and then just be negative Yeah, so then it'd be six. With the. Okay, now just simplify it. Be one. <laughs> He's shaking his head. one half. What? <laughs> Stupid lines everywhere. Okay. Um, would it be one third? One and one. Or two thirds? Three. 
Oh, yeah. Three halves. Good. Negative three. That is correct. All right, so no decimals. Just keep them improper <laughs> fractions, and then, yes, that equals x. We're done. No, we are not done. It should pair. So let's use that top equation. We're going to replace x with negative 3 and y with negative uh, 3 halves. Uh, she's the top equation left. Yeah, so we're going to use the bottom one, right? So that will give us 18 plus uh, 3 is a negative 9 halves. So it looks like something might have gone awry. That will not equal 0. So we checked it right here and we found that it's good. So the answer should be written as a coordinate pair. Negative three halves. Yeah, negative three.